Let's start. We are going live now. Hello, everyone. Good morning, good afternoon, or good evening. Very well, warm welcome to everyone who have joined our YouTube stream today. We continue our SAP Signavia webcast series. The episode number four today is a hands-on session and our expert will explain new connection options for SAP Signavia process intelligence to SAP and non-SAP systems and lead you through a demo. As I said, today is the episode number uh, four. But uh, as you can see on the screen, we have already three sessions that were conducted uh, in March and April. And if you didn't catch up with us on this news, please uh, do so. I will later on, I will post the links to the session that were already conducted in the chat for your convenience so you can jump in those replays immediately from the chat. Uh, as I've already mentioned, uh, the first session was an overview session. The second one, we were concentrating on process performance measurements. And in the session number three, we had uh, SAP Signavia process insights and uh, understanding how to connect to an ERP backend system. As I've already mentioned, today we are concentrating on new connection options for SAP Signavia process intelligence to SAP and non-SAP systems. There is one more session that is planned uh, in May. It's on the 2nd of May, and I will also place the link in the chat for those who would like to join us next week. So, and now back to our speaker. Today we have a very experienced speaker. We have Fabio Ferrari, who is Senior Product Manager at SAP Signavia Process Intelligence. My name is Larissa Brinkman from the SAP Global User Groups Organization, and I'm your host for today. We kindly ask you to post your questions via live chat, and we will answer them at the end of the presentation. The additional materials of this session, the PDF, for example, will be available under the same link to the video in the description of today's session shortly after the stream uh, is finished. With this, I wish you great interaction and uh, ask Fabio to take over. Fabio? Thanks a lot, Larissa, and uh, welcome everyone also from my side. I'm very excited uh, to be here. Uh, I am Fabio Ferrari, a quick introduction uh, on myself. Uh, I'm part of the product management team at SAP Signal Process Intelligence, uh, so supporting in the roadmap and uh, product vision uh, definition for process intelligence and looking for uh, uh, as an objective to enable customers, partners, and internal stakeholders uh, how to best uh, use uh, the product uh, and to drive the value for, for our customers. I started this position uh, uh, roughly one year ago. Uh, I come from a consulting experience. So I, I, I was part of the other side of SAP, SAP services, uh, working on uh, implementation projects uh, uh, on process mining, uh, analytics, uh, industry 4.0, and artificial intelligence topics. And uh, very excited to start this session. So let's go to see what's the agenda for today. Uh, I would like to start uh, giving uh, you a, an introduction on what is SAP Signal Process Intelligence, uh, and then uh, going into the heart of our uh, session to explain what are our data integration options. So this uh, will be on the slides and we, it will take uh, up to 20, 25 minutes. And as, it's, uh, an, uh, as it is an, hands-on session, uh, as promised, uh, we will have, uh, we will jump into the product to see a few demos on how to use the, the product 
again, 20, 25 minutes uh, so that we can leave uh, time for question and answers uh, at the end. So let's start. Uh, so SAP Signavio Processing Intelligence is part of SAP Signavio as a suite, which is part of SAP. So we all know SAP. Uh, SAP's vision is to enable every enterprise to become an intelligent, sustainable uh, enterprise. And so uh, everything starts with our platform technology as a foundation uh, of, uh, of the SAP ecosystem of industry cloud uh, solutions that uh, aim at serving our customers uh, to best run end-to-end uh, -end processes. And uh, so how does SAP Signavio come into play exactly uh, at this level in order to uh, ensure that our customers can have an holistic uh, uh, overview of uh, the end-to-end -end, uh, business processes? So it comes to cover this top strategic layer of the SAP's vision. Uh, what is SAP Signavio? Is it, in, it is a cloud-based process transformation uh, platform. It's composed of, any, um, of many different product lines uh, with different capabilities uh, spanning from uh, process and journey modeling, uh, process analysis and mining, uh, and the workflow and automation uh, execution capabilities. Uh, but What's important to understand is, is, uh, is that SAP Signavio is not only a product, a tool, but it also provides with uh, an approach, a methodology uh, for our customers uh, uh, to support them in understanding, improving, and transforming their end-to-end -end business processes fast and uh, at scale. In this session, we are going to focus more on uh, the process analysis and mining capabilities. And so we have two products uh, basically to cover this, uh, this topic, SAP Signal Process Insights and SAP Signal Process Intelligence. We can think of SAP Signal Process Insights uh, as a starting point for SAP customers in particular. Uh, we, and it covers tens and tens of business processes uh, and uh, within minutes uh, by just connecting to uh, ECC or s systems, uh, our customers can have uh, access to uh, a rich breadth of content, which means uh, process flows, KPIs, and recommendations based on uh, 50 plus years of SAP experience in, uh, in business processes. So this is really huge. Uh, and, if, and I would encourage you, if you want to understand more, to have a look at the recording of the I think it was the second session delivered by the colleague, Dirk Gendroska, who is the product manager at SAP Signal Process Insights. But now, what if we want to connect to non-SAP uh, RP systems, but to any kind of enterprise transactional systems or data lakes or data warehouses or messaging systems? What if we want to combine multiple uh, source systems uh, together? What if we want to uh, ingest more data, more granular data with more events uh, and more attributes to enrich our analysis? And of, what if we want to customize uh, our analysis and do process mining on any level of our process house? This is where uh, SAP Signavio Process Intelligence comes into play, which is our uh, uh, SAP Signavio Process Intelligence, our pure uh, process mining uh, uh, solution. Uh, if any of you is not uh, super familiar with uh, the concept of process mining, uh, and if I have to find uh, a one slide that best represents what is the concept of process mining, I think it's that uh, it's this one because process mining is all about uh, connecting to uh, transactional systems that leave digital uh, operational traces, and so the let's say the, the objective is to connect to those data and generate the so-called event log, which is the heart of, uh, of a process mining uh, uh, as a concept. Here you can see the minimum uh, viable example of an event log with three columns. We need uh, all the time the case ID, which is the key identifier of uh, um, the business process instance uh, in place, for instance, for the procure to pay process, so we can think of the purchase order item. We need an, uh, an event name uh, to understand what is the, the activity that we are going to, to track and analyze, and what's the event time, so the timestamp 
uh, when that activity occurred for that specific business process instance. Of course, we can enrich with, uh, um, with uh, multiple attributes of the event log to, to enrich our analysis. So what are the main use cases for process mining? Just to cover uh, the four main ones, so we can start with uh, business uh, transformation, such as uh, business uh, and IT transformations. The main example is the migration from ECC to S4, but also other initiatives, uh, such as for customer excellence or mergers uh, and acquisitions. Process excellence, uh, because we have a process mining engine to allow uh, customers to have a process discovery, process monitoring, uh, do root cause analysis, and in general, any kind of advanced process analysis. Audit and compliance, because you can model uh, what are your uh, compliance rules, uh, and so you can, uh, with a data-driven approach, uh, analyze and measure how your process is actually compliant with uh, those rules. And then automation, of course, uh, because you can uh, quickly discover uh, inefficiencies and uh, identify uh, process automation uh, opportunities. So I want to remark the fact that SAP Signal Process Intelligence is process agnostic and system agnostic, which means that we can cover these uh, main use cases for any type of process and most of all, uh, any type of uh, uh, source system, so SAP and non-SAP. I'm proud to, to share that uh, Gartner um, uh, recently released uh, uh, its first process mining uh, uh, magic quadrant. And SAP Signavio was uh, recognized as a leader in process mining. And it was really recognized our strength to uh, use SAP Signavio process insights to have access, fast access to a rich breadth of, uh, of content. So to have fast insights and then extend the analysis in SAP Signal Process Intelligence with a process mining engine to have a deeper uh, insights on your process. So just to set up the expectation, from now on in this session, we are going just to speak about uh, SAP Signal Process Intelligence, so our pure uh, process mining solution, and to give you a quick overview of the capabilities, uh, um, in a process mining project, uh, you, you always start with, uh, uh, let's say, process data management, so to connect to the source systems, to ingest the data uh, and transform the data into the event log in the format that we have seen before, that, uh, that is key. So that uh, the event log is the, is the foundation, the data foundation for a process ana uh, analysis engine to uh, enable querying on uh, the event log on process, uh, uh, any kind of uh, data, also experience data, to derive uh, uh, insights and automated insights to, 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 to users, so that uh, we can uh, represent uh, in visualizations and analytics uh, such insights, so that any business users and analysts can consume uh, such insights uh, and exploiting uh, our uh, collab uh, co collaborative uh, capabilities, uh, such insights can be shared uh, within the organization um, uh, so that all the, the relevant stakeholders can be uh, aligned. And uh, here is missing, we have, uh, we can now add a fifth building block, not yet, uh, but maybe because we are going to go live in May with uh, uh, the actionability layer. So we'll also have a fifth uh, building block, which is the actionability. We already have uh, actions, but uh, on beta version, we are going to go live in, in production uh, in general availability with, uh, with actions in, uh, in May so that we can close the loop. So ingest the data, uh, query data to analyze your process and derive insights so that we can share in, collabor in collaboration mode uh, insights with the organization, and then we can turn insights into action. Across these uh, capabilities, uh, uh, you can, customers can benefit of uh, multiple accelerators, which are pre-packaged content uh, so that we can reduce drastically time to value to not start from uh, zero, but after connecting to source systems, having a series of uh, pre-built uh, pre content, uh, transformation templates to automatically generate the event log metrics uh, available out of the box or dashboard templates with widgets uh, already uh, organized uh, in a specific way to drive uh, value 
really at time uh, uh, close to time zero. After this very quick introduction, let's go to, to the heart of the, of the session. So what are our data integration options? First of all, why are we talking about uh, data integration? Because uh, the first step of a process mining project indeed is to get data. For SAP signal processing sites, uh, there are no particular issues in, the regard, in these regards because really there you plug your ECC or SFRANA system uh, and then in a matter of minutes, uh, you can get uh, a pre-built data model and a pre-built uh, process analysis as a standard. But in a pure process mining project where you need the process intelligence, uh, data integration is one of the main challenges. Why? Because you need to be system agnostic. So you need to connect to uh, SAP and non-SAP source systems, cloud and on-premise uh, systems. So living with hybrid architectures. Uh, as well as uh, you need to combine multiple uh, source, uh, source systems data and merge them uh, together. Sometimes data are missing, so you have uh, some uh, challenges in accessing the data. Data needs to be cleaned, to be aggregated, to be transformed. And also in process mining, we need specific data modeling capabilities to transform data into the event log in the format that we have seen uh, previously. And also most of the times we deal with uh, a high value, high volumes of data. So we, we are dealing with big data. Hence we need a technology that is able to support us and scale uh, with high volumes of, uh, of data. So what's uh, our response to such challenges? How do we want to address them? Basically we have three options. Option number one is to use our standard connectors and our standard ETL capabilities. Mm -hmm. Second option is to decommission these challenges outside process intelligence because we can exploit the, the power of the business technology platform. Third option, be open. So you can bring your own data integration tool. But let's have a look, uh, uh, a closer look to this, let's say, functional architecture of, uh, of, of the options. Here we can see our process data management uh, tool. On, uh, in, on top, uh, we always find accelerators. So uh, for standard processes, uh, in a few clicks, have the possibility to generate automatically event logs after connecting to source systems. We have the event log data builder with those specific data modeling capabilities to generate the event log out of the extracted raw data. And then uh, we see three options, standard connectors, ingestion API, and uh, file drop zone. Let's start with standard connectors. Uh, so this is basically the, the first option. Here we can use standard connectors, so available within process intelligence, uh, so that we, we, you can use the standard ETL capabilities to connect to a specific list of uh, uh, source systems, which can either be enterprise or, or databases. So uh, ECC and S4, SuccessFactor, ServiceNow, Jira Software, just to make uh, some examples. Then we have the ingestion API. The ingestion API is a connectivity option that enables, uh, ex, uh, let's say, ex external tools to push data into process intelligence. And we can, uh, 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 leverage on this to integrate uh, with the business te uh, technology platform. In particular, we choose specific services, which are SAP Data Int Intelligence Cloud and SAP Cloud Integration to extend the connectivity options uh, uh, to all SAP applications, uh, API-based uh, applications, data lakes, data warehouses, messaging systems, and so on and so forth. And then uh, we can have the file drop zone so that if you want to run everything externally, then you have two, two options basically to bring your own data integration. You can uh, upload the CSV files, so event logs uh, or any kind of uh, extracted uh, tables uh, externally. You can upload them into process intelligence as a CSV upload basically, or uh, leveraging on the ingestion API as well. So you, have, you can have your own middleware and then you can orchestrate the data pipeline and push the data into uh, ingestion API. Now, the question is uh, when to use what? The simplest and most recommended option, option number one, is to use uh, whenever it's possible 
standard connectors and uh, the standard ETL capabilities, of course, because uh, it, uh, let's say, it's the option that takes less time in a uh, process mining project. When uh, is that possible? First of all, when the source systems is in the list of the supported source systems that we can support with uh, standard connectors. Whenever there are no highly complex trans transformations to be done on, uh, uh, on the data, and whenever the data volume is within the threshold that can be supported by standard connectors, which uh, differs uh, uh, connector from, uh, from connector. If uh, option one is not applicable for any reason, then the most recommended option, of course, is to go with uh, SAP Business Technology Platform. In particular, SAP Data Intelligence Cloud is uh, uh, mainly recommended for ETL-based integration scenarios. Uh, when you want, uh, for instance, to uh, apply transformation logic on bulk data. SAP cloud integration on the other side is mainly recommended for API-based integration scenarios, uh, application to application on transactional data. So you have basically uh, these two, two uh, choices. Let's see in a nutshell what are our connectivity options. Now, based on, uh, on our standard connectors, we can connect to uh, SAP HANA database, uh, SAP CC and S4 via RFC function models, but also via CDS views. Now, in May, we will have this option. SAP success factors, SAP Ariba with an asterisk because it's not a direct connection, but it's via a BTP application that needs to be deployed. Jira, AWS, uh, Microsoft SQL Server, Google BigQuery. SAP Data Sphere as well, and so on and so forth. With SAP Data Intelligence Cloud, we can extend our connectivity options with all SAP tools, basically, and also some other third party systems. We can leverage on uh, open connectors. You can build your own connector in Data Intelligence. With SAP Cloud Integration, we can uh, reuse adapters uh, with. Uh, already pre-built, so out of the box that can be used. We've already some extraction logic uh, to connect to third party systems such as Dynamics, Salesforce, Workday, and Oracle NetSuite, as well as any API-based cloud applications. Why do we have here another as asterisk? Because uh, the technical integration is uh, already available. We want, we have in our plan to build some iFlows to um, as a template to connect to these systems uh, so that uh, we, uh, basically you can reuse them and reduce even more the time to value, which is our North uh, Star metric, uh, reduce the time to value. So this is our in, um, connectivity options in a, in a nutshell. What are the benefits? Uh, integrating with the data intelligence cloud and cloud integration. We have seen it. We can widen our connectivity options and reuse out of the box uh, um, adapters. We can solve all the uh, transformation and data quality needs, and uh, they are ent enterprise grade uh, technologies uh, already proven in the market, so we can scale to enterprise volumes. Again, option three if for any reason no option one and no option two are, are available for technical reasons or commercial reasons, then uh, we are open and you can always bring your own data uh, integration. Before going to, uh, to the hands-on session, uh, one final remark to uh, share uh, what is our vision to evolve the product even further uh, on, on this regard. We plan uh, for, for the second um, uh, uh, part of the year, uh, next year in 2024, to embed the main services available in uh, the business technology platform and data management services, so uh, SAP Data Sphere and Data Intelligence Cloud, in process intelligence, and I'm speaking about specifically the replication uh, flow and the data flow services, uh, uh, so that we can strengthen our ETL standard capabilities uh, within the, the product uh, directly. So enough with the slides. As promised, uh, hands-on session. I would like to show you three, uh, let's say, demo flows. Uh, first, to see together how we can use the standard connectors and ETL capabilities, uh, how we can uh, build a uh, data pipeline in Data Intelligence Cloud to extract data from Qualtrics, 
and uh, uh, an high flow in SAP cloud uh, integration uh, uh, to uh, uh, send the data into process intelligence. So I'm going to switch uh, to, to, to the product. This is uh, uh, SAP Signavio uh, process intelligence. This is the main page. So let's go to the process data management side of the house. So here, basically, you can start uh, with uh, creating a connection to your source system. If the, the source system is on-premise, then we need to leverage on uh, the on-premise extractor uh, that needs to be used to open and ensure the communication between your source system and uh, uh, the IP addresses of SAP Signal Process Intelligence. Uh, then you can... Uh, create source data, so the extraction logic. So, okay, now I connect it to my system. Uh, what is, which tables, which fields, which filters do I want to apply during the extraction time? And then the process data pipeline to actually build and execute the whole ATL, considering also the data model with uh, uh, the event log uh, generation logic. So the first start is that we can create uh, a, a connection. Here we can see, now I, I have zoomed uh, quite a lot to, to enable also the audience for, with, uh, with uh, the smartphone to, to have a look. Uh, we, we can connect to enterprise systems, uh, we can connect to uh, warehouses, uh, uh, systems uh, to databases uh, and to other, uh, to other options. Uh, we can uh, connect uh, in this example to an SAP S4 HANA on-premise system. Uh, so in that case, we can use uh, a, a connection to, 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 to SAP. I already created it just to, to save time. So let's have a look. So this is the connection to our S4, S4 HANA system, basically. And uh, uh, this is valid, so it means that uh, everything is working fine. We are connected to, to the source system, basically. And how to do that, we can just indeed uh, uh, insert these, uh, these, uh, these, uh, these fields, uh, these, uh, these elements, uh, and then uh, ensuring that we have our on-premise uh, connector uh, uh, running, usually in a virtual machine. Now, at this point, we have two options. Uh, either follow a bottom-up approach, or a top-down approach. If uh, the target process that has been identified to be analyzed with process mining uh, is particular, so there are no accelerators available on that, then the approach is bottom-up. We need to define from scratch the, extract the extraction logic, so we need to be, uh, create a new source data from scratch. And we need to build uh, all the SQL, uh, all the data modeling uh, uh, activities, objects to generate the event log from scratch, uh, which usually in a process mining uh, project is what takes the, the most time. If uh, you identified a, a business process that usually let's say, is standard, then uh, you, can, you can check whether an accelerator already, already exists. And uh, uh, here already we can access to our template documentation where you can see the list of all the processes that can be uh, addressed with accelerators. So with transformation templates, matrix dashboard uh, templates. In our case, uh, let's... Uh, see how the top-down approach works. So let's imagine that we wanted to analyze the order to cache process on uh, our S4 HANA system. So we start by creating a, directly a process data pipeline. So let's call it webinar 27 of April. Uh, so we are going to indeed connect to SAP system. Uh, let's search for order to cache SAP S4 HANA so that we can reuse the template already available as an accelerator. Again, we don't want to create any source data from scratch. We want to trust the, the accelerator and then eventually just uh, work on top by on, uh, on Delta to adjust uh, eventually what's, what's missing. And then we can reuse our uh, connection in, in this case. So what's happening now is that the data pipeline has been created. Uh, we, have, we can see here the, our connection to SAP system, green. We can see our source data right now empty because we didn't run the extraction yet. And we can see our process data model. 
two things I want to highlight here. The first one is that uh, if we have a look at the source data, it's not empty. It's already uh, predefined with uh, the list of all the tables that we know that are needed for the, in order to cache uh, uh, process. And for any table, we also don't have all the fields to be extracted, but just the relevant ones. And also uh, we have uh, SQL filters already applied uh, so that uh, really we can have uh, the only the relevant tables, fields, and uh, uh, filter data that we need for the procure to pay uh, for the order to cache uh, process in this case. Second thing is a process data model. In this case, again, it's not empty. You don't need to start from scratch. You can already see here the business objects involved in the in the in the end-to-end -end process of in order to cache. And then uh, we can see a list of event collectors already available out of the box uh, with the SQL code uh, uh, already pre-built, basically. So you can uh, run a preview, you, we can adjust the SQL, and basically everything is done with, uh, with a few clicks. Uh, and if we run the ETL, then uh, everything, uh, uh, the, the, the event log is generated. Only thing we need to do is to uh, associate this pipeline with an actual process so that we can start our analysis. We can either create a new process or select uh, an existing one. So let's create a new process. And in this case, now we can run DTL. Now, uh, what, I, uh, what I would like to do now is to do a trick, which means uh, uh, the extraction, of course, is the, the, the part that takes the most of the time. So we'll just remove this uh, uh, source data. So the, the ETL tool is uh, quite flexible in that, on that. And I would like just to reuse uh, a source data that I already uh, used, uh, uh, created say, this, uh, a few hours ago, where the extraction has already been uh, taken place uh, so that we already have the extracted data. And now we can only run the transformational load because we don't need the extraction. It was already there. And so we can reuse uh, a data extraction just to run the transformation uh, end load, basically. So we can see here the, that uh, the extraction has already been taken place uh, two hours ago. And then we are running the, the transformation and load the part. Now, as on the event log basically has been generated, transforming the raw extracted data into the, the, the event log. Now uh, we are switching to the process side of the house. Uh, this is the process that we have just created. We have uh, linked it to our process data pipeline, where we can see that how the transformation and load is, uh, uh, is in progress. And once the, the, the event log is generated, so once we have green here, we can start uh, uh, creating uh, dashboards or investigations to organize and structure in a storytelling mode or in a dashboard analytics mode, uh, all the analytical widgets and content that we want to uh, build in order to start analyzing uh, our process. We can either import a dashboard template already available as an accelerator not to start from scratch, or we can create a new dashboard. Uh, that can be structured in pages. So for instance, we can uh, rename a page because maybe we want to start with process discovery. And so we can add uh, uh, multiple widgets in order to fulfill the, the, the target of the analysis that we want to, to achieve. Let's see if in the meanwhile, uh, okay, it's the, the transformation and load is done. So we can uh, create uh, uh, a widget. So let's start with the main one in process mining, which is the process discovery widget, where we can basically play uh, with uh, uh, with uh, with the graph, and we can see actually uh, not uh, uh, in uh, let's say in in, in talks uh, in uh, uh, oh, I think my process is running in uh, in a certain way, but with a data driven and actual approach. Uh, here you can see how your process is uh, is actually running. Uh, and so you can basically have a clear understanding of the ZIS status so that you can plan your target status and start, and start your uh, transformation journey. 
This is it for this, the, the first part of the demo, the, the standard, uh, uh, how to use the standard connectors. We use the standard connector to connect to NCPS for an system and how to use the standard ETL capabilities with SQL to generate uh, uh, event, uh, an event log, uh, leveraging on a, an accelerator for the order to cache process. Let's now switch to the second uh, part of the demo, which is uh, data intelligence, basically. So, so this is data intelligence. Uh, let's see now how to create a very simple uh, data pipeline. In order to do that, we can uh, go to our modeler and uh, we can create uh, a new graph. Our purpose here is to connect to a Qualtrics system, extract data and push them into process intelligence. So we can look for a Qualtrics operator and then to a SAP Signavio operator. And then we can close our data pipeline like this. Let's connect the dots so that we have our simple data pipeline where we can uh, basically connect uh, to a Qualtrics system. Now uh, let's configure this, uh, this operator by choosing exactly what is the Qualtrics uh, tenant that we want to uh, connect to. And then we need a survey ID because we want to extract data from a specific survey. So in order to do that, maybe we can switch directly to, to Qualtrics so that we can get our survey ID. In this case, in a visa tenant, we have a, a free service and let's take this one for instance as an, ex as an example. Let's, uh, let's have it here. And so now with this operator, we define the connection to Qualtrics system and uh, what is the target uh, survey that we want to extract. Now, how can we push data into process intelligence? Uh, we need uh, an ingesting API. If you remember in our functional architecture, we need to push data into ingesting API. So let's go back for, uh, for a second to uh, our to process intelligence and let's create a new connection. A new connection, uh, a new ingesting API connection. Let's call it uh, again. Now you, knew, you know the, the naming convention I'm using here, webinar 27 April. Basically what we have here is uh, an API endpoint and the token so that we can ensure a successful uh, request. How are we going to use this information? We can uh, go back to data intelligence and we can create uh, a new connection basically. Uh, we want to use an open API connection. Let's call it uh, again. Uh, the host name is our API endpoint where we want to just remove, uh, we just want to, to take the host name and then uh, we can choose a basic authentication basically to use our token as, as a password to ensure a successful connection. Let's save it. So now we have uh, configured the connection to, to, to our ingesting API uh, in process intelligence. And we can go back to our operator where we can now select uh, what is the connection we want to, to use, which is uh, the new one that we just created. What is the name of the target table that is going to be created in process intelligence? And then uh, basically we can save uh, our pipeline and uh, we can uh, we can uh, we can run it so right now these uh, these, these operators are python operators uh, we plan to have soon a productive uh, operator to push data into process intelligence but right now you can already have access to this uh, simple data pipeline which is available in, in github Basically here, it's, it's a Python operator when you can take the uh, extracted data from Qualtrics and uh, basically do some data mapping and then create the schema uh, to push the data into, uh, into the ingestion API. We can see here that it has been completed. So we can go back to process intelligence. Every ingestion API connection is already automatically synced with the source data. 
here we can see that in the logs, uh, right now, it's, uh, it's still in the progress because uh, the pipeline is executed, but now in Justin API needs to do some checks to understand whether there are any inconsistencies in, uh, in, the, in the metadata. And so uh, we refresh and okay, now it's done. There were no errors. Now we have uh, uh, pushed data successfully into processing intelligence. What we could do now, uh, just to, to show you a possibility, would be to go back to our original data pipeline that we have created previously and uh, add the Qualtrics data as a new uh, source data. So, webinar. So, in on one flow, we extract operational data from SAP from SAP SPANA system, and on the other side, we can uh, also extract data from Qualtrics and build uh, a centralized data model so that uh, our uh, uh, process intelligence engine can analyze both operational and uh, experience data uh, to do some journey to process uh, uh, analytics, basically. Uh, of course, here, uh, needless to mention, we have uh, seen how to build a very simple data pipeline, but here is the list of the uh, operators available in data intelligence, uh, ABAP, uh, AWS, SAP HANA, MQTT to, for IoT scenarios, OpenAPI client, uh, so any kind of uh, uh, operators that can be used in data intelligence to build uh, a, a complex and powerful data pipeline. I will go to the third demo, but also looking uh, at the time, uh, I, would, uh, I would like also to leave some time for questions and answers. So I will just uh, show you the, uh, basically the, um, the final result. I will not go through the process to build an iFlow from scratch, but if you really want that, maybe you can uh, ask that in the questions so that we can do something interactive. Um, so basically SAP Cloud Integration is a service uh, uh, part of the integration suite in the business technology platform. So this is the main page of the integration suite uh, and uh, you can create uh, uh, an iFlow uh, basically uh, here in design integrations. Uh, I will just access the iFlow that I just created a few hours ago. Uh, just to show you um, very quickly, in, in this example, uh, I just used the, the example to uh, connect to uh, SNS for Ana public cloud with a, a public API available in API Business Hub. Uh, and then build this iFlow that was actually auto-generated with, with a template so that we can uh, map uh, the source data exposed by the, the, API, the source API, whatever it is, it can be S4 in this example, but it can be any other, any other API-based application. Do the mapping to expose only the, the data that we, that we want. And then uh, basically uh, out of that, we have an endpoint uh, as an iFlow that can expose data. And then in process intelligence, uh, we can create a connection to uh, open the door for this iFlow and get the data in process intelligence. And again, as that intelligence, we can also add it uh, in uh, existing data pipelines and uh, uh, complete our uh, uh, basically process analysis. Um, so just uh, to show an example on how you can uh, use and leverage on uh, iFlow capabilities in cloud integration to connect to API-based systems and expose data in process intelligence. But now I will go back to the presentation uh, to quickly share what are the key takeaways. Uh, first of all, we have seen what are the data challenges in, in, in process mining. So data integration is uh, a serious matter in process mining. And so uh, we have seen how we respond uh, with three data integration options, standard, business technology platform, and open to bring your own uh, data integration. And then what are the benefits in integrating with uh, data intelligence cloud and uh, uh, cloud integration, uh, which is a really a differentiator for us uh, in the data integration uh, domain as they are proved in the market to be the leaders uh, in this domain. And so I would uh, officially uh, open up uh, for uh, questions. Larissa, back to you.
All right, thank you, Fabio. Thank you for your presentation and those insightful demos with all these powerful capabilities. And uh, um, I can only encourage our audience to bring up questions in the chat. Um, I will uh, give you more minutes for the audience to bring up the questions. But um, as you are working already, Fabio, with the customers for a long time, and also there were uh, some questions brought up in advance. And one question uh, that I have in mind is, for example, as we are talking here about data volumes, volumes, do we have any kind of limitation on data volumes? Can you please uh, share some insight on this? Thanks a lot for the question. Of course, it's a, it's a relevant question. We're talking about the data connectivity and integration options. So, and of course, uh, uh, there are always limitations uh, when we speak about the technologies and, uh, and, uh, and the real systems. Uh, what I can say is that to, uh, we, can, uh, uh, we are in line with our main competitors. Uh, um, when we speak about the data, vo um, the data volumes that we can uh, support them, in January, we re in January, we released uh, uh, a lot of uh, enhancements uh, and we uh, completed the migration uh, of our uh, process mining uh, engine and we can uh, now ensure high responsiveness uh, on queries, uh, on event logs, uh, up to a very high um, uh, value of, uh, of records. And we have in plan uh, for, for the next uh, uh, part of the year, for 2023, to even increase this number and they will be exactly equal to our uh, main, uh, main competitors. If you're more interested in, 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 uh, in more details, of course, you can, uh, you can reach out to me. Right, thank you very much. Uh, there is a question in the chat. Um, dear colleagues, who should I contact if I would like to have access to Signavia functionalities? not just for a 30 day trial account? Uh, that's a good uh, question. Of course, you can always uh, start with a trial that takes uh, 30, 30 days to, to exploit the basic functionalities of, of the solution, especially in the, of, of the suite. Uh, so process uh, manager, uh, uh, journey modeler and, uh, and, other, uh, and other products. Uh, if you're more interested uh, in, uh, let's say in having a, a uh, in running a pilot or uh, or in purchasing licenses of a process intelligence, you can reach out to me and then we can dispatch to, to the right uh, sales uh, uh, representatives to, to, uh, to let you get in contact with, with them. Right. I hope this question is clear. I mean, the answer is clear. There is also some comment in the chat regarding using chat functionality. Uh, um, so to, to bring up questions now in the live chat in YouTube, you just have to, uh, yes, to post your question and write your question in the live chat. Uh, I'm not sure whether I understood this comment correctly. And you obviously need to be logged in via Google or via uh, YouTube so you can uh, leverage the chat functionality. Right. Um, I allow one more minute for participants to bring up questions. However, there is one more question that is brought up very often um, by various uh, in various conversation. And the question is, do we need any additional license for data intelligent and cloud integration? Yes, uh, yes, I agree that it's, uh, it's quite often a uh, uh, question that, uh, that comes up. Um, so basically, yes. 
yeah, to be transparent, yes. So there is no, right, right now there is no joint uh, bundle or package of uh, licenses between uh, Signavio and, uh, um, and the BTP. Uh, so um, if you want to leverage on the intelligence cloud and the cloud integration, you need to have a BTP contract and the consumer CPEA credits. Um, in our uh, roadmap, uh, um, indeed we plan, uh, as I mentioned, to embed some of the main services, so the replication flow and the data flow, so that we can uh, strengthen our uh, ETL capabilities uh, standard with no additional license uh, uh, needed. But right now, yes. Right, okay. An additional Thank license is required. Okay, thank you very much. Um, I can see additional questions in the chat. Um, I hope uh, as we will be uploading the materials of this session, the PDF to the description to the video that will be available on YouTube. You can obviously um, leave your comment in the description to the video and bring up your question there so uh, we can interact with you there. With this, as I can't see more questions in the chat, um, thank you very much to all the participants who joined today. Uh, please uh, stay tuned with us. Uh, the upcoming session is, uh, or the final session of the SAP Signavia webcast is on uh, Tuesday, 2nd of May. Uh, the schedule is available under the link that I've provided in the chat where all the conducted and all the upcoming sessions I mentioned. So uh, feel free to join us next week. We will be very happy to welcome you in those upcoming sessions. And uh, you can also see uh, the contact data of uh, Fabio. It will be part of the PDF that will be uploaded. I can, uh, yes, and I can, of course, uh, point out to the final session that this will be about uh, Lean IX, and uh, I will be very much uh, excited to have you in this session. With this, thank you, Fabio, for your presentation, for showing the demo. It was, uh, I think it was very insightful and uh, uh, um, yeah, clear and uh, a lot of possibilities that are actually, um, yeah, you can leverage with all these uh, capabilities that are available. With this thanks again, a lot also from my side, and it was really a pleasure. So thanks, uh, thanks a lot. Okay, with this, thank you very much. Have a nice day, and bye bye. Bye bye. Thanks a lot again.